This video will cover the converged network section from the curriculum. Our networks are always changing and evolving, and as a network administrator, you need to be aware of this. There are all different types and kinds of traffic that can be found on our modern networks. This includes video, voice, and data. When multiple services are running on one network, this is known as a converged network. Think of networks such as Verizon Wireless as an example. With Verizon Wireless, you can send text messages, you can call, you can stream video, you can surf the internet, all over their one IP network. People want resources available to them anytime, anywhere, and from any device. And having a converged network is vital to be able to provide all of these services on any device that they wish. Converged networks have several advantages. We only have one network to administer instead of multiple networks for each traffic type. Cost savings over having multiple networks. We don't have to have infrastructures for a voice network, a video network, and a data network because they're all over the same infrastructure. Also, a converged network is going to be well designed. In order for it to support everything, it must be well designed. Otherwise, it's not going to operate very well or users aren't going to get the experience that they want and expect. Cisco has a, a vision of a converged network known as their borderless architecture. Cisco's borderless architecture allows anyone to connect to anything, anytime, anywhere, on any device. But more importantly, all of these connections are going to be secure, reliable, and seamless. In order to have a borderless network, we have to have an infrastructure of hardware and software that is both scalable and resilient. In the picture example below of Cisco's borderless network, we could connect to this using any device, anytime, anywhere, and get access to all of the resources and services that we wish. In order to have a borderless network, we must have some design guidelines that are built on the following principles. First, our network should be hierarchical. This facilitates the understanding of each device at every tier. It simplifies deployment, the operation and management, and reduces fault domains at every tier. A borderless network is going to be modular, which allows seamless network expansion as your network grows. It's also going to be resilient. This keeps things always on and is able to recover from disasters seamlessly without anybody noticing an error or a hiccup in the network. Borderless networks are very flexible. They allow intelligent traffic load sharing by all using the network resources. Keep these principles in mind when designing your infrastructure. Be able to be flexible, build, build in some resiliency, allow your network to expand, and try to use a hierarchical approach that we'll talk about with a two or three tiered network coming up. When you design a borderless network, it should be done in, done in one of two ways, either using a three-tiered model or a two-tiered model. Cisco recommends the three-tiered model, although not all networks and companies can support or afford a three-tiered LAN design, so they'll use a two-tiered instead. With a tiered network design, each tier has its own specific defined roles. Using this approach will ensure some of that resiliency and flexibility that we talked about in the previous slide. Uh, the first layer, the access layer, this provides network access to our devices. This layer is closest to our end user devices. At the access layer are going to be switches and our access points that our PCs, cell phones, PDAs, or other smart devices connect to. The access layer then connects up to the distribution layer in a three-tiered setup. Typically at the access layer we're using lower end switches, maybe 2960 switches that either have 100 megabit or gigabit per second connection uplink ports. Uh, VLAN configuration is typically going to be set up on these devices. VLANs will be talked about in detail in chapter 3. Port security is usually configured at the access layer and as I said between 100 and uh, 1 gigabit per second speeds are common. At the distribution layer, that middle layer, we have a lot going on here. The distribution layer is aggregating large-scale wiring closet networks. It aggregates layer 2 broadcast domains and layer 3 boundaries with our VLANs. It provides intelligent switching, routing, and network access policies 
Um, it does packet filtering or firewall routing. It provides quality of service. And we try to provide high, avail high availability and resiliency at the di distribution layer by using redundant switches and equal cost paths to the core. The core is the backbone of our network. This provides fault isolation, very high speed connectivity, typically 10 gigabits per second or higher, and we'll typically see fiber optic at this layer. The core layer is mainly built around speed and fault tolerance. We want the core layer to be as fast as possible and be able to be as, as resilient as possible. In some cases, as I said, there will be no core layer and will collapse the core and distribution layer together. This is an example of a three-layer hierarchical network. At the top, we have our core layer, and maybe this core layer is connecting one building over here on the right to another building over here on, on the left. Connecting these two buildings together is going to be over some type of fiber optic connection, a very fast, reliable connection with some fault tolerance built in here, connecting to our core layer routers. That then connects down to the distribution layer. At the distribution layer, we will probably have at least gigabit per second speeds or higher. The distribution layer switches will typically be layer 3 switches and be able to route traffic out to the core layer. Most of the layer 2 traffic we want to happen down here at the access layer. At the access layer we would have switches that all of our devices plug into such as our phones, PCs, printers, and servers. At the access layer, we're probably working with 100 megabit per second connections or faster. We have VLANs and port security implemented at these, and those will be aggregated back to our wiring closets at the distribution uh, layer, which would then forward that traffic onto the core layer. What we're trying to do in a hierarchical network is keep traffic on one layer of the network and only send it up to the other layer if we need to. We want to try to keep all VLAN traffic going in between VLANs on this level. If they need to be routed from one VLAN to the next, we can then send them up to our layer 3 routers. If we need to get to another network or another building, we can then send it up to the core layer and get it transferred from one network to the next or one building to the next. That is all for this video on converged networks. I encourage you to read the section that goes along with this in the Cisco curriculum as well. Thanks for watching.